In this video, I want to take some of the loops that we've been working with. I'll combine a couple of them together, and I want to show you how to emulate a vintage style mix. Then in the following video, I'll show you how to take that same loop and mix it in a much more modern sounding way. This will give you two different ways of processing your loops and samples that can range from kind of more vintage sounding stuff to more crispy and modern sounding stuff, depending on what you're needing for a given production. So before the loop is going to sound like this, I mean, I'll make sure to just include this in the download links in the course materials. It's just the hi-hat combined with the shaker. It sounds like this. I'll show you this loop here in a minute. And as I've got some drums as well. So that's before and then after it's going to sound like this. a lot more saturated, has definitely that like tape sound that you get on a lot of vintage recordings, and it's also a lot brighter as well. It also kind of has that more washed out, less percussive texture that's kind of characteristic of tape. So all this loop is, let me go ahead and just uh, turn this one off here and I'll show you the kind of blank initialized version of it, uh, and also without the uh, drums. So it's just my shaker loop that I made in the previous video. And then it's just a sliced version of the hi-hat. And I think I repitched it up a little bit uh, just to so it kind of matched the pitch of the hi hat. But that's not super important. I'll make sure to include this whole sample in the download links of the course materials uh, so that way you can follow along with the video. So, the first thing we we'll want to do here is we want to go ahead and emulate like a vintage acoustic space. So, if we think about the way that a recording was done in a vintage recording studio, let's uh, think about Motown, for example, here. There was the main tracking room that everything was recorded in, and it was a very small room, but it had definitely a little bit of a sound to it. Even though it was an acoustically treated environment, there was still a little bit of reverberations that were imparted onto each of the recordings that were done. And that's just natural with acoustic instruments that are recorded in a live environment, is there's always a little bit of that room captured along with those recordings. That's part of what gives those sounds their flavor as well, is the fact that they're recorded in a physical space. So let's go ahead and emulate that, because right now we're loop sounding super dry. So it has a nice tone to it, but it's very, very dry on its own. So let's go ahead and add in a reverb. We'll use the BX room reverb. So I'm just type in BX uh, underscore R and it should pop up. So let's go down to plugin alliance and we're going to go ahead and grab the room reverb. So by default, this is set to hundred percent, but we'll go ahead and adjust that once we get our room set up. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set this. We can manually add in our own settings, or we could start with one of these reverb types to kind of quickly find something. Because I know I want a room, and then something kind of a little bit shorter, we'll either use the small or medium. Let's see which one sounds better. So I think that small sounds more like an actual recording space. Let's maybe push that a little bit more natural sounding. So that way, the way it sort of smears all those frequencies, a little bit softer. And then I want to go over to my equalizer, go ahead and cut out some of those high frequencies. We'll change it over to a high shelf. So if you're not accustomed with this interface here, basically when it's put all the way to the left, in this case, it's going to be a high shelf. And then it turns into like a, an individual little bell curve here, which is what this icon on the right means. But we want that to be a high shelf. And then we want to move that all the way down. So that way it's basically kind of cutting out a lot of those frequencies. So it's cutting out all that stuff. And what that will do is darken the room that our recording is happening in. And then we'll go over to the mix. And I will put that just about at 50, maybe slightly under, maybe slightly over. And it's a super, super subtle reverb, maybe even a little bit less of this highs uh, reduction here. Just let a couple of them through. So that is th negative 13.7 decibels. Basically what we're trying to do is just add a little bit of ambience. So it's an extremely subtle effect. But it's kind of just helping that loop feel a little bit more like it was actually recorded in a physical environment of some kind or some sort of nice recording studio rather than just being a sample that was printed into a computer. And then from there, we want to go ahead and thicken up our sample with some saturation. So if you think about the analog signal processing path that happened in a lot of Vintage Studios, and also still to this day as well, whenever you're recording things, usually it hits some kind of microphone preamp. So the microphone's plugged in to the mic pre, and then it goes from the mic pre into the mixing console. 
So there's a lot of different options for mic pre's. There's tube mic pre's that use tube amplifiers to impart their color and distortion to everything. There's solid state amplifiers that use a series of transformers to make their sound. So a bunch of different stuff, depending on the type of flavor that you're going for. So here I want to use something that's a little bit more flexible so I can kind of adjust it to the exact loop that I'm working with. So we're going to be using a really great plugin called HG2. Which is actually an emulation of hardware effect unit. Um, and basically what this is, is it emulates the sound of a microphone preamp, but it was designed to be ultra flexible, almost like a guitar effects pedal is, because usually like with a Neve preamp, for example, you only get one sound, you get the Neve sound, or if you use like SSL mic pre, you're only going to get like an SSL sound on that mic pre. But in this case, this specific piece of hardware was designed to allow you to create various different sounds out of your microphone preamp with some saturation and distortion, depending on what you needed for a given recording. Um, and the plugin version of this is actually super good, really, really great on drums because it handles transients really well. A lot of distortion saturation plugins tend to smear high frequency transients, but in this case, it actually sounds ultra, ultra nice, keeps them nice and punchy. So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and just crank the pentode distortion. So it's two different types of uh, distortions here, pentode and triode. Sounds like this. Whereas the triode sounds like this. So it's kind of these even and uneven harmonics. Basically, just crank that up a little bit. Start to get some of that more distortion. Then the main thing here is I want to go to the saturation frequency and turn this down. Make sure to add that saturation to you, by the way. And that way it's more low frequency focused. It gives me a slightly darker tone. Add a little bit more triode. Let's also reduce the output volume. Then I'm going to go ahead and enable the alt tube. We have basically just a different style of tube. Kind of seems to push those upper mid frequencies forward a little bit more. So I think on this specific drum sound source, it sounds a little bit better to use the alternative tube inside of the plugin. So we're adding a little bit of volume, we're thickening it up, and adding in some nice saturation, like what you'd get from a microphone preamp. Now let's go ahead and stick with that same sort of processing chain from here, then it would hit a mixing console or a desk of some kind. So let's use one of my favorites, which is going to be the SSL 4000. Uh, let's see, I have it over saved in my effects here. This is going to be the BX console SSL 4000E, which is an emulation of a 4000E mixing desk from Solid State Logic. And inside of here, we're going to do a whole bunch of different things. So the first thing that we will do is cut out the low frequencies. We're going to increase this up to just about 70. So we can use that to chop out those lows. That sounds super nice. And then the one thing that we're going to do is cut out everything above about 8000 Hertz. So it's all of that ultra sizzly top end. But the interesting thing that we can do with this SSL is then boost at 8,000. So this is the main EQ section that's set to 8K and we could boost up. So we can actually add brightness without it adding that ultra crunchy top end. And it kind of like thickens up the sound, especially this upper high frequencies and kind of washes them out in this really interesting way. So we're using about 4.5 decibels again. And without it, much thinner, but with it, we still have a nice brightness, but it kind of thickens everything up. And that's because this isn't like a really hard cut. It's a little bit more subtle of a cutoff curve, and then we're boosting it. So we're kind of adding all this interesting color into our signal because we're boosting and cutting that same frequency. Now let's add in a little bit of compression, crank that threshold up a little bit, have the release be quite a bit shorter. Crank it up so the ratio is a little bit higher, like 10 to 1 will sound nice. We're not adding a ton of compression, just makes everything slightly more snappy. So the ratio is at 10.3.1, release is at 0 0.19 seconds, and then this is at negative 12.3 decibels.
And a couple of the last things we'll do is one, go over this virtual gain, which if you turn this all the way up, you can hear all that noise. We don't want that noise. Crank that all the way down. Um, and this is just like an eternal gain inside this plugin, so it's not going to affect the input gain into the console. It's like a virtual uh, gain that enables you to adjust the amount of noise. Crank the total harmonic distortion all the way up, which is going to increase the amount of saturation you get from the console. Sounds super nice. And then we'll go ahead and drop this down just a little bit. That way we're kind of gain matching everything. Adding a little bit of gain, but that's fine. Um, it's not a super big deal in this case, but it is helpful to know that that is what's happening there. Then we'll want to add in a tape machine. I'll just type in tape. I'm going to go down to my plugins here and under Plugin Alliance, I'm looking for the Kive Audio Tape Face. It's going to be a tape saturation plugin. And that's what would happen on these vintage recordings. Everything would go from a room recording of some kind into a preamp, into a mixing console. Then everything would be printed over into a tape machine. So here we're going to add saturation and also some compression because of the way that it's going to saturate because of tape. So we'll have that be probably about like right there. We can actually get quite a bit of this, maybe like 10 decibels. And then we'll also reduce the output gain. So that we're not just adding volume. And I want this to be set to 7.5 ips, which stands for inches per second. And all that means is the tape is playing back at a slower speed. So it goes through 7.5 inches of tape per second, as opposed to these higher tape speeds. And the sound that that gives us just a little bit darker, a little bit more artifacts happening because of that slower tape speed. So you can hear those high frequencies are a little bit clearer when it's set to 30. And the high frequencies are a little bit darker whenever that's set down. Also add some saturation, add that low boost in. Because we're working with loop, go ahead and just crank that stereo width all the way up. It's going to throw out the stereo wideness a little bit, but in our case, it sounds nice. And that just makes that whole loop feel a lot more three dimensional. So now it's a little bit wider because of the stereo width control here, but you can also hear a little bit more like into the back of the sample in a way. The low frequencies are a little bit more focused and clear. The high frequencies are kind of smoothed out and saturated in this really nice way. It kind of just brings that whole loop together. Last thing I want to do is go ahead and jump back over to my plugins here, and I'm going to add in some compression. And I want to add in the Lintel Audio SBC compressor. And this plugin emulates a API 2500 bus compressor. And this will just be used to kind of glue that entire loop together now that we have all the tone and color of everything all put together. Now that we have the tone and color of our loop all situated. So the first thing we'll do is make sure that attack is nice and slow. We'll have that be like at uh, 10 milliseconds, which in this case is still pretty fast, but on this compressor, that's a slower setting. And then we'll have the ratio be at two to one. So it's less intense. We're just trying to glue everything together. We're not trying to really smash this. Okay, then we need to go ahead and make sure this is set all the way up. So that way we start to get some compression. Have that release be nice and snappy. So we'll do that at like 0 0.105 seconds. Then the main color of this is going to be coming from this nuke button right here, which is going to be basically really overdriving our signal and hyper compressing it. Let's add some more distortion with the total harmonic distortion. And we don't want to go too crazy with that, just a little bit more. And then let's also go over to our style and try to mess around with the, either feedback compression or feed forward. So in this case, the feed forward really brings out the transients of the drums. These are two different styles of compression. That's a lot more snappy. And right now that sound is very over compressed. So what we're gonna do is go to our mix control and we're gonna blend that in my original signal to get the desired amount of compression. Now 
Yeah, maybe a little less. Okay, I like where that's sitting. So altogether, our loop sounds like this. And with the drums. Tell us how to process our loop for a more vintage sound. We've compressed it, added some tape saturation, added some saturation from some preamp models, and that's really just going to pull our entire sample together, giving us a more vintage tone. So thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one.